Hello everybody! So, I completely forgot about this method that I used before. It is recording with the tablet mic. So, how I'm doing that is, I have it connected to my desktop. So, um, and then I click, um, listen to this device on the tablet. I, I listen to the mic. So it's going through the desktop, the, the input of the tablet. And I can hear myself slightly, but it's not as bad as OBS because um, I have to turn it down so that it's not distorted. So like I hear my voice a little bit through the tablet. It's just enough to where the delay doesn't throw me off. So let's just get into this because he talks about iron absorption and as you know, I had iron deficiency anemia, and I think this is a very important topic. So let's just get straight into this. I don't think I'm full, full screen, but if I click something now, it's going to mess up everything. So let's just start. I'm going to have a normal speed because his accent is actually quite difficult, even for me. But here we go. That's how you boost the iron absorption from the cacao powder. Hello, Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020from.com. Today, I want to talk to you about how you can optimize your iron absorption from your intestines by at least 300%. How you can maximize your iron absorption from the gut by at least threefold. And here is the background to this. A lot of us will get our iron supplies from plant foods. And the ion that is present in plant foods is called non-heme ion. And I'm referring to the ion you're going to get from things like vegetables, some grains, and some fruits. Now, some foods that are manufactured are also fortified with ion as well. And the ion that is used for this fortification is non-heme ion. And here's the other thing. Some of you may have been prescribed iron supplements that you are taking on a daily basis. Now, guess what is used uh, in the iron supplements? Well, it is non-heme iron. On that basis, it is thought that 85% of the iron we consume is made up of non-heme iron. That makes me wonder what kind of iron they use when they give you infusions. Because I had no issues. I only had the one time where I reacted badly. And I think it was because it went in a bit too quickly. When they when they slowed it down a little bit, I found I felt better. Um, I didn't have any more reactions. My reaction was very strange, you guys. They've never seen it. The hospital, the doctors were like, I've never seen a reaction like that before. So about 10 minutes after my second infusion, I had, for those new, I had to go in in 2018 to get iron infusions for, it would be once a week for six weeks. So I would go in on a Monday for about two hours and get my infusion. Now my veins were so weak, you guys, that they had trouble finding them almost every time. And it was to the point where the nurse was stabbing the thing into places that I knew weren't veins and it was just making the pain, ma making it hurt, and they nearly got a nerve. They nearly got a nerve. Um, they nearly got a nerve. I'm lucky to still have at least somewhat normal feeling. I think when I feel along that area though, it does feel a bit funny, but I think it's back and I'm probably just because yeah yeah they nearly got the nerve though and anyways I digress so the second day was probably one of the worst out of those the second infusion rather because it was second week so that second week that was the first that was the worst day that was the worst infusion because after the infusion, I had a reaction after about 10 minutes 
it was like really hot, red hot feet. Like I could feel them burning up, burning. They were hot to the touch. They burned like fire. And I had welts popping up on my legs and they weren't any weird. She, my mom just said they were white welts. Like I asked what color they were because I thought maybe they were a weird color, but she said they were white. And my skin is white, so I can only assume the color was, it was, it was just, they were just blotches. Um, and you could feel them. I could feel them on my skin. They gave me Benadryl within the first like two minutes and it was only like probably 25 milligrams. Um, and that held it off. Now I was in walking distance from the hospital to the house, but I didn't want, okay. So when I had my feet lifted up, it started to go down, but they only gave me Benadryl because when I started to walk out, my feet were burning up again and the welts were forming again. So they gave me some, they gave me the 25 milligrams of Benadryl. Um, when I swallowed, I'm gonna tell you, it felt very strange. And I wondered, is this the beginnings of anaphylaxis? Is this the early stages of anaphylaxis? Cause I think anaphylaxis can happen. But I wonder what, I wonder what kind of iron that is because if that's all it takes, just that iron, yikes, yikes. Now for those curious who might be a doctor here, the iron I received was venifer or venifer, depending on where you're from. Okay. I don't know what else they put in there. I don't know if it was something they mixed in with the iron because there was one time the nurse said, I'm just gonna go mix your drugs, okay? And that made me question, I was like, drugs? I thought I was just receiving iron and a saline. So what else could it have been? Was it a reaction to the saline? Was it the iron? Was it, what was it? What? Would it have been that I reacted to? Because they said reactions to the iron were like headaches, vomiting, uh, things like that. They said, come back if you have any other reaction. The, the doctor actually, they called my doctor when I was having the reaction because they didn't know what it was. And I couldn't even stand on my own two feet because of the burning. Um, I was messed up when I got home. I 25 milligrams, that's all it took. That is all it took. And I was just, I couldn't focus. I know I'm getting way off track here, but I want to tell this story. This, this is like, I was messed up for like a full day. I was exhausted. I, my mom had to quit. Like when she would ask a question, what do you, what would you like for lunch? I was like a computer. You know, when you hit like a really slow computer, you know, when you hit a, a command on the computer and it's like, as it's trying to load, no matter what command you hit, it doesn't move. Then finally, when you hit the command or finally, like after like what, 10 seconds, it finally moves. That was me. She had to go, Hmm. Before I answered, I was like, I, I heard her, but my brain was like, like just, I couldn't, I couldn't. Which means only 15% comes from heme ion. And heme ion is available only from animal products. So what he was saying was your pills and your plant products that have iron only have heme iron and only 15% is absorbed. And now when I took the pills back when I was, you know, on iron supplements, I was very constipated. Now with these infusions, I actually found myself going to the bathroom a lot better. And in fact, when I would first come home, I would have to pee. So there was one time I had to pee before the infusions were even done. I'm like, dude, I'm going to explode if I don't go right now. I was really uncomfortable. I even said to the, like my mom had to call the nurse over so that I could get help to the bathroom because you know, the machine was still attached. So, that's how much crap they fill you up with. It was insane. I was 
it was hurting too. It was that that intense. Now, is there anything wrong in consuming? This guy swallows an awful lot. In non-heme iron, ah, uh, clearly there isn't. There's nothing wrong in consuming non-heme iron. However, non-heme iron does have one very important drawback, and that drawback is the fact that non-heme iron is poorly absorbed from the intestines. So logic dictates. that you should be eating heme iron. Ding, 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 ding. But no, he doesn't say that, does he? But do not despair, because in this video, I'm gonna show you six hacks that you can employ uh, to improve your iron absorption, your non-heme iron absorption from the intestines. So do not worry. And I'm also gonna give you a practical demonstration on how to go about improving uh, or maximizing your non-heme iron absorption. So do not worry. So here are six tips to help you boost your iron absorption by at least 300%. I don't think this is going to work. I have literally done all the things. I've done all the things. The only thing that got my ferritin up, because it was the ferritin that was dropping, eh? The only thing that got my ferritin up was eating protein, actual protein, and lowering my plants. Tip number one, you want to get the sauce right. You want to eat the right foods. The reason this is important is uh, you want to make the iron available in the first place for absorption. If the iron is not available, then of course it's not going to be absorbed. So you want to eat foods that have high iron content. Indeed, this shouldn't be a problem for you because in my last video, I gave you 10 foods that have high iron content. I'm going to go over some of them again uh, shortly. And in the next video that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be talking about vegetables and some fruits that have high iron content. So eat the right foods. That's tip number one. Tip number two, you want to cook your iron rich foods with cast iron cookware. Uh, cooking with cast iron cookware has been shown to improve the availability of the iron in those foods. Now, um, I have heard that people can get like copper toxicity from your, like your water pipes and your, um, you know, because it's not organic copper. It's not like, you know, the same copper that you get from your animal foods right? You don't get copper toxicity from animal foods. And I only know this because uh, I know I looked up the symptoms of copper toxicity. And the people who are here eating liver, like tons of liver, they're not throwing up. They're not in pain and they're not throwing up. Okay? So don't be blaming liver. You people out there saying liver toxicity, like liver's toxic because of the copper. Stop. Just stop. The only copper, the only way you can get copper toxicity is from your pipes. I, which makes me wonder if I should get my pipes checked just to be safe so that I'm not like puking. Um, but anyway, I don't puke. I haven't puked for a long time, but it's not that I can't, it's just I haven't. Um, I have, trust me, I, I have, but it's been so long since I have. Trust me. Um, I want to be sure that I never get to that point where I'm puking. So anyways, back to what I was saying. I feel like if you were to do this, you could get the same, because my friend also one of my subscribers, she would throw up because the amount of iron she was taking was toxic. I feel like if you were to use the cast iron skillets, you would get enough iron toxicity that you could end up sick this way as well. I just, I don't know how to feel about this. Guys, by the way, if you need to supplement and find a bunch of ways to up your iron intake 
And especially if you have to take these supplements long term, obviously the diet you're doing isn't working. Carnivores will supplement, yes, but only temporarily because there are some things that carnivores need, especially when they're first starting out, like electrolytes, uh, like maybe a few other small things here and there because they are start they are coming from a standard american diet just like everybody else vegans on the other hand have to take the supplements long term long term that's the key carnivores short term vegans long term big difference so that's tip number two so tip number three tip number three you do not want to consume your iron rich foods alongside tanning containing foods the reason for this is tannins have been shown to block the absorption of iron from Okay, okay, okay. Guess what has tannins? Cacao powder that he mentioned in the beginning. Guess what also has iron? Cacao butter. I think you're mistaking here. You, you got something messed up here. Something isn't right. From the gut. So you do not want to eat them together. You don't want to eat your iron rich foods alongside foods that have got tannin in them. What foods got tannin in them? Well, you'd be surprised. Tea and coffee. Yes, I know it's a usual habit of ours when we're eating, we want to have our tea, we want to have our coffee uh, together with the, with the meal. Uh, if you want to maximize your iron absorption, you do not want to do that. You want to keep them apart. Uh, you don't want to drink your tea and your coffee alongside uh, a meal that's got high iron content. I should probably try to find that um the iron rich foods that he lists. I'll have to see. I, I, I'll look through the channel and see if I can find it. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, if you are taking calcium supplements, do not take your calcium supplements just before your meal, during your meal, or soon after uh, you've had your high iron containing meal. I think I heard something about that too, yeah. Um, you have to wait like two hours or something. The reason for that is calcium, just like tannins, calcium does block the absorption of iron from the gut. So uh, do not have your calcium supplement along with your meal in one form or the other. So that's tip number four. Tip number five, you want to make sure that when you prepare your meals uh, that have... Sorry about the notification. I forgot to turn on the do not disturb. Sorry, guys. ...have high iron content. You want to also include foods that have got high levels of beta carotene uh, there is research evidence uh, to yeah beta carotene let's get that orange color up in the skin yeah orange is perfectly natural to have in you know skin that you know i don't know if you're vegan anyway who wants that yellowy orange color to their skin high amounts of beta carotene i think he's mixing something up here because i never heard about this by the way um i i kept my iron levels up with vitamin c i think he i either he m made a mistake or i don't know but it's vitamin c not beta carotene but even then, like, you, you're you not going to fix your ferritin doing this. My doctor said, oh, just just make sure you eat more iron-rich stuff and it'll get your ferritin up. What he didn't say was, eat more red meat. They actually asked if I did eat red meat when I had good doctors. But, um, he didn't say to eat more of it, which was weird to show that when you do this, you increase your iron absorption by at least 300%. So uh, bitter carotene foods uh, should be part of that uh, recipe. Tip number six. Now, what you wanna do, just like tip number five, you wanna make sure that when you design your recipe, uh, you wanna include uh, vitamin C rich food. Oh, okay, so he does mention that. I didn't watch through the whole thing because I just felt this was worthy of reaction. I, I, when people start like really messing around with iron and iron absorption and stuff. Guys, this isn't, a, this isn't telling you to fix your ferritin, it's telling you to fix your iron. 
You want to fix your ferritin before you fix your iron. If the ferritin starts going down, that's when the iron starts to go down. And that is not what he's mentioning here. It's only, you could have perfect iron, but very low ferritin, like I did. I had an iron level of 19 millimoles, and I had a ferritin level of 10. I'm not sure what 10 is, what unit that is, but I'm pretty sure in America it's similar in terms of the measurement of ferritin. 10. 10. Awful, 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 awful. The only thing that fixed it was going keto. Foods alongside uh, your iron rich foods because vitamin C has been shown to boost the absorption of iron from the gut. So you want to do that. Uh, if, it, if you can make it part of the recipe, great. If you can't, then just have a vitamin C food soon after uh, you've had your meal. I would have a lemon drink after every. I tried having a lemon drink, like a bit of lemon water every day. Guess what I ended up getting out of it? Canker sores up the yin yang. Uh, I peed a lot more. And quite frankly, it didn't help my ferritin. And uh, hummus does not have enough vitamin C, apparently. It should, but it doesn't. I would have freaking molasses every night. I would, like, the, the, you know that black strap stuff? It's very, very potent. Very runny and potent. Runny as in, like, it's kind of the consistency of honey. Not quite as sticky, but it is sticky. Eh. 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 So uh, how do you go about this? Now, in case you're wondering how to incorporate tips number five and six, i.e. beta carotene and vitamin C rich foods uh, into... Um... People are already doing this. Potatoes, carrots, maybe some lemon water. People are already doing this. I was doing this. Guess what? My ferritin was still low maximizing your iron absorption. I, I've got some practical examples here for you. Hopefully you're gonna find this useful. So you remember I talked about oysters, clams, shellfish uh, being high in iron. Well, uh, when you make your recipe involving oysters, clams, or shellfish. That's all you need. You don't need to add anything to the oysters or shellfish. If you like oysters and shellfish and all that stuff, because I used to, I can't stand them anymore. I taste the sand in them now, even if there isn't really any sand in them. I don't know what it is. They taste too much like rock. So I can't eat them anymore. I, I could probably eat them in a chowder. But I digress. You don't need to add anything to the shellfish. The, the, the best thing you can do is just eat the shellfish. Don't add anything to it. No, just don't. If anything, you're going to make the absorption worse by adding stuff with the shellfish. Have some tomatoes with it, okay? Uh, high in vitamin C. Uh, include some tomatoes in the recipe. That's one way. Now, I'll... I can't, I can't respect this guy that he's, now that he's not vegan. I know that he's not vegan. He's suggesting shellfish. However, what I can't accept is uh, adding in plants with non with with heme sources because that's the problem. That's the problem. Plant products just hinder the absorption of your heme iron as well as your non heme iron. So this isn't helping. By, and also, it's not helping your ferritin. It is not helping your ferritin. If you want to get your iron from shellfish. Go right ahead, but you're not going to get it if you combine this crap with it, okay? I, I, I just, no, I can't get, get behind any of this crap. Sorry, don't put the crap with it, just eat the dang shellfish. Also talks about white beans being high in uh, iron. Of course, I've got kalanili beans here. Uh, just one example of white beans. Other white beans also apply. High no, beans do not have iron. They have they have phytates, so they bind to the iron. You're not going to get any of it. But you include some sweet potatoes in your recipe. That won't help either. This guy might be paleo. I don't know. I'll have to look more into his, like, actual diet. I don't know. 
I'm kind of curious now, but I can respect, I have a little more respect now that I know he's not vegan, but still, I, I no, no, no carbs, because that will hinder the absorption. Okay, very easy combination uh, and it works, okay? White beans along with sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes have high bitter carotene, okay? You see, it's not that difficult. Yeah, but they'll also make you orange. Uh, cacao powder. Well, of course, cacao powder is high in iron. Uh, how about you add your cacao powder to a smoothie that's got strawberries in it, okay? It works, okay? That's how you boost the iron absorption from the cacao powder. I used to think that, but then my ferritin kept dropping and I was like, nope, I'm still doing something wrong. Next, tofu. Uh, you. Oh, again with the freaking tofu. So he must be flexitarian, I guess, or uh, pescatarian. No, 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 just no. I'll have to, I'll have to look to see if he eats. He might, he might talk about red meat. I just, no, this, this subject really gets to me because I was iron deficient. I was, I've been there. I've done that. I've done everything. My ferritin fell even lower. I wondered why I was feeling worse. I remember lying on my bed one day going, I feel worse. My friends were online with me. We were talking and I said, I feel worse. And they were like, uh oh, you think you're feeling worse? I said, yup. And guess what? Turns out my ferritin fell another three units. So something was not adding up. This is not going to help your ferritin. I am sorry, but the only way to help your ferritin levels is if you just eat the fish and just eat the meat. Chop your tofu blocks and you want to do a nice recipe. How about you include some bell peppers? High in vitamin C, okay? Bell peppers, tofu, they go together. It's not that hard. And next, sunflower seeds. Okay, when you have your sunflower I used to eat those. Guess what? Nothing helped. They didn't help. Holy crap, they're disgusting. I can't eat those anymore. I, I liked them in the beginning, but now, bleh. Sunflower seeds. How about you just have an orange afterwards? It could be one or two oranges. It doesn't have to be one. But oh, my bowels. Just thinking about that. Ugh. But, you know, vitamin C rich food, sunflower seeds together, boost absorption. Next, you remember I talked about my uh, cashew nuts, my love for cashew nuts. Very, very poisonous, by the way. Very poisonous, extremely poisonous. The workers have to wear gloves to prevent themselves from getting burned. Yeah, wonderful, huh? And then you're eating it. How about you finish having your cashew nuts? Well, not directly, but like there is a process they go through but still you're reading it it's it's you're still getting a small dose of whatever that is that's burning them that probably burns you from the inside out i i ate like what five or six cashews and then i i thought i was gonna be sick i'm like i shouldn't eat anymore i i never ate cashews since have, have a peach or two peaches or three uh this is awful to, to boost the iron absorption from the cashew nuts. I did all of this. Well, I didn't have peaches, but I always had lemon water. I had lemon water and I had like, you know, my hummus and hummus has vitamin C and, oh my goodness, stop Facebook. Um, sorry, you guys. <laughs> Next video, I'll turn all those off. But I did all this. I did the vitamin C. I did all this crap. Nothing worked. I remember even eating like beef, potatoes, and carrots. And then having a lemon drink afterwards. It still didn't help my freaking ferritin. Works. It could be peaches, it could be apricots, it could be kiwi. It doesn't matter. Just have fruit alongside your cashew nuts or soon after to boost the iron absorption from the cashew nuts. Next is edamame beans. Uh, edamame beans are high in iron. How about when you design your recipe? Probably fortified too. Yes, silly little excuse for a nutritionist. Pfft. What do you know? You make sure you got some carrots with it, okay? It works, very simple to do. Just do that and you'll be boosting the iron absorption from the edamame beans. Carrots and edamame beans. 
you see it, it's not that hard it's very simple to incorporate beta carotene alongside uh, your high iron containing foods and also incorporating vitamin c alongside your high iron containing foods it just works question is it possible to use fruit juices like apple juice or orange juice that are high in vitamin c alongside our high iron containing meal well yes you can however that answer comes with a caveat and the caveat is this i see fruit juices as a sugar bomb and one thing you got right see i was just using plain lemon sometimes i would add a little honey to it but yeah my mom would cr would would um, uh, squeeze half a lemon, and then she'd add honey to it. That was my little, you know, uh, drink at at e the end of each meal. Okay, at the end of each uh, dinner, loved it. I enjoyed those very much. I I really did. But I know now why. Um. It was freshly made. Sometimes it was just plain lemon water, like a little bit of lemon juice and then some water. Um, he's right that fruit juice is a sugar bomb, but would you rather the fiber from the fruits stopping you from the absorption or the seeds, though they are edible, they stop the absorption? Would you rather that? You can't have the cake and eat it too in this situation. You have to do one or the other. Like, plus I'd rather do either, neither one of those anyway, so. And uh, most adults who are watching this video, they already have metabolic issues. And the last thing we want to do is send our blood sugar levels through the roof just because we want to optimize our iron absorption from. Yeah, well, we were all naive back then, but also, None of this will help the ferritin levels anyway. It's about the ferritin, and you know what ferritin is? A protein. You know what protein is? You know what a bioavailability is? Because the things that you suggested here, other than the shellfish, are not bioavailable. Just eat the dang fish. From our foods. So uh, the approach I would prefer is for you to use the regular oranges, the regular bell peppers, the regular apples, the regular tomatoes. As apples have nothing when it comes to vitamin C, but also they don't even help the ferritin, so there's that. Supposed to uh, going for the shortcut of using fruit juices, okay? So uh, hopefully that helps. And in case you're wondering why I included carrots in that package, well, it's because carrots are exceptionally high in beta carotene. And and vegans who eat a bunch of carrots get orange skin. Beautiful. And uh, you'll be doing yourself a big favor by including carrots in your recipe if you have the chance to by virtue of their nutritional profile. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about vegetables and some fruits that have high iron content. That video should be available in a week's time. So be on the lookout. So if you got some value from this video, as usual, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video. And uh, please share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. Now, if you liked the examples that I showed you here on how to incorporate beta carotene and vitamin I didn't like any of them. Didn't like any of them. Vitamin C uh, into your foods that have high iron content. Uh, if you liked what I did there, please uh, let me know in the comment section. Or if you got any other comments or any questions, uh, please leave them down below as usual. I think that's about it. Until next all right guys he was a major disappointment i was disappointed i am very appalled at this this it doesn't help your ferritin okay just upping the iron is not going to help your ferritin it really isn't it makes me wonder what kind of iron the vent the venifer was because my ferritin actually did go up it did But I was also eating a little more protein during my lunches and my dinners back then too. A little bit more. Um, I went back to kind of the older way once the infusion stopped, but yeah, my ferritin was really high. 
not high like holy crap high, but high like oh wow. This is bad though. This advice, I'm very appalled, very appalled, and I hope he he should be very just. I don't know. I'm just not. I don't approve of this. Okay, I don't approve. All right. Well, that's it for today's video. Um, so if you want to improve your ferritin levels, um, fish and only fish, if that's what you like, meat and only meat, we are carnivores, at least 90%, if not more, carnivore is what we thrive on. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. I just had to post this because, again, I have been a sufferer of iron deficiency for so long. So yeah, I hope you found this interesting, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Carbs! <laughs>